when a lawsuit is filed, discovery takes place. And discovery is an exchange of documents, uh, interrogatories or questions, depositions of keeper of records, and also depositions of parties, that is the plaintiff, the defendant, and witnesses, sometimes very key witnesses. And I was taught by a crusty lawyer 35 years ago that really there's a twofold purpose in taking a deposition. Number one, you want to see how the client uh, or your adversary presents. Does he or she make a good appearance? Is he or she believable, credible? Was he or she in a position to see what happened? And does he or she narrate the events properly? And the second question that, that comes into play in a deposition is ascertaining the facts. That you would, you would expect. It's question, answer, question, answer, all about what happened on a particular day, a particular night, events leading up to a particular incident and the like. But that first point, ascertaining the appearance of the particular party should never be forgotten. And as a result, a client should go to a deposition dressed appropriately and be polite. I often tell my clients you should always be polite, but you should be firm. You should not be induced or cajoled into saying something that you're not comfortable with or isn't the case. Now, you do have an attorney present when your deposition is taken, and the attorney will interpose the appropriate objections and so forth. But there is no judge present. However, there is a stenographer present, and the stenographer will take everything down that was questioned and everything that was answered. Occasionally, there will be breaks and there will be a discussion off the record. But for the most part, you should anticipate that everything you say will be recorded uh, in, in a stenographic means. As a result, a case can sometimes turn on a sentence or two in a deposition. So its importance can never be minimized. Uh, a client, therefore, should always prepare with his or her attorney before a deposition. And when I say prepare, I don't mean that there should be a, a rehearsal of questions and answers, but there should be a familiarization or a refamiliarization of what happened. Because the reality is, is that a deposition will often take place many months or years after the incident. And even uh, the best historians can forget things uh, in, in the years or two. Now, you may be asked in the course of your deposition, what did you review and did you sit down and prepare with your attorney? And then you have to answer those questions. But in no event do you have to answer anything privileged. And as I said earlier, your lawyer is there to interpose any objections and to stop questions that touch on privilege. And certainly communications between a client and an attorney are privileged. Now, you will get an errata sheet at the end of the, uh, uh, when the transcript is made available, and you review the dep deposition for accuracy. And at some point down the road, we can talk about what the true nature of an errata sheet is. But there is an opportunity to revisit what was said in a deposition. Again, keep in mind that the attorneys are present, a stenographer, very importantly, is present, and no judge is present. And while no judge is, pre is present, uh, the actual transcript can sometimes brought, be brought before a judge either in a post-deposition motion or more likely at the time of trial. And certain sentences that were used in a deposition can certainly be used as part of a cross-examination of a fact witness or cross-examination of an adverse party. Thank you.